campus of Rowan University in Glassboro, New Jersey. The GCEN presents high school football. Today, it's the South Jersey Group One Championship game as Paulsboro takes on Pensgrove. Hello again, everyone. Rob Christ along with my partner, Ted Kosniewski. A beautiful afternoon for football. Crisp, clear skies, about 52 degrees. Two fantastic programs, a lot of offense today. Coach Glenn Howard has led this Paul's Road team to championship after championship, taking on Coach John Emmel. Four and six last year, he's really brought around this Pensgrove program. A contrast of history, but not a contrast of styles, as both of these teams have vaunted offenses. First, let's talk about Pensgrove. Grove. You know, and speaking with Coach Emmel before the game, he feels very confident about this team, feels that may, he may have four of the best players that are on the field today. You have to like what you see with the number of points that they put on the board. Yeah, you look down, big scores throughout their season this past year. They're a young team, too. I think the biggest mountain they have to climb in this game is the Paulsboro Mystique in a championship game. Well, Paulsboro certainly has a Mystique, but they also have a defense that they have going to have concerns about Kavon Lewis, because Kavon Lewis is the quarterback. His numbers are ridiculous. 72% passing, the number of touchdowns, the number of yards that he's accumulated is phenomenal. And think about this, this is his first year as a quarterback. First year quarterback, now if I told you the stats, 32 touchdowns, he's almost thrown for 3,000 yards. You never see that with the smaller schools. This team can put up points and they can put them up in a hurry. On the other side of the football, we mentioned Paulsboro equals tradition. Every single year, you know that Paulsboro is going to be in the mix, in part because of the tremendous talent that are in, is in the town. But what a coaching staff Glenn Howard has. Every single year, there's a few things you can count on. They're going to compete, they're going to work hard, and they're going to be solid in all phases of the game. And the thing that impresses me most about this Paulsboro team, they completely changed their offense about four or five years ago. Went to spread, spread attack on offense, and they've got nothing but great results when they run it. Well, one of the things that they boast is always a great running game. This year, no uh, different. Deron Holloway has lit it up once again. The senior running back, one of the best running backs you'll see throughout the season. 27 touchdowns coming in. He's the featured running back. The thing that impressed me most is going over their season. He forced three fumbles last week that helped lead him to the win and on fourth down made the big stop. So he's as big a force on defense as he is on offense. Well, you mentioned Paulsboro went to the spread offense. Pensgrove saw what Paulsboro did, and they too went to the spread offense. They've been putting up astronomical numbers. Last eight games averaging over 46 points per game. This could be a track meet. Stick around, get the popcorn, get the soda. Don't leave your seat because you'll probably miss two or three scores. We'll have it for you in just a moment. Welcome back to Rowan University. South Jersey Group 1 Championship game about to get underway. Atlantic City Electric Game of the Week here on the GCEN. Rob Christ along with Tad Kosniewski. Great afternoon for football. Cool, crisp conditions. We're on the turf here at Rowan, so footing will not be an issue. Paulsboro, as you see there, in their traditional red, all red, and we have the Red Raiders versus the Red Devils. Paulsboro, red head to toe, whereas Pensgrove, red pants, white top, and white helmet. So, I'm sure I'll confuse that once or twice along the way. This is a high scoring attack, this Pensgrove team. Interestingly, Paulsboro decided to defer on the kick and put the ball in the hands of that offense initially. So an interesting decision on the part of the Paulsboro coaching staff. A lot of times you want to see what your defense has, knowing it's going to be an offensive game. Work with your defense first. And we are underway. Kick taken at the 20-yard line, returned by Pensgrove's Robinson. Robinson slung down at the 24, so he actually loses a yard. First down and 10, Pensgrove, and we'll see Kavon Lewis and this vaunted aerial attack. As we mentioned, Kavon Lewis threw for nearly 3,000 yards this year. I'm very anxious to see him play Rob live here today. 
Lewis is a kid who hadn't really played football uh, quarterback last year. In fact, wasn't sure he was going to play. And the coach came out, Coach John Emmel, made sure that he was a part of the process, and the process has worked well. Speaking of working well, the first pass is a hookup to Jamar Johnson and a gain of about four. That's a tough defensive play, too, for Paulsboro. Four wide receivers to the near side. Somebody's going to be open. They got good blocking downfield. We're able to only get five out of it, though. Same formation, Rob, this time to the far side. Bunch quads to the right. Again, slung out to the right, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. They're going to rule that as a forward pass. Tyreek Brown, interestingly, throwing that. Well, that's one if you're Pensgrove early on. That's a play you have to make. You're uncontested. You're near the behind the line of scrimmage. You have wide open room. Just took his eyes off the ball and now makes for a tough third and five play deep in your own zone. So now it's Tyreek Brown again at the quarterback position. So in motion, it's Johnson. Brown rolls to his right. Dumps, throws, falls incomplete. Not sure I understand. Well, that's something maybe you feel like you can catch the defense off guard, but not a well-thrown ball right there. Good job by the left defensive end to make him throw the ball before he wanted to. And Paulsboro, when you look at Coach Howard there, he got what he wanted. They, they deferred, they're on defense, and a three and out. So we have a personnel issue, Pensgrove able to Hustle off the field and they'll punt it away. Three and out here to start things. Good snap. Left handed kick, left footed kick, I should say. And that will fall at the 38 yard line and be down. So Pensgrove moves the football on the first play and then nothing. And makes us sound like geniuses talking about all the offense here today. And Paulsboro on defense gets a three and out. And again, that's why you never bet against this Paulsboro team in a big game. They know what it takes to win these games. It was interesting in speaking with Coach Emil before the game. He said that Brown's a little banged up. Not sure how much he's going to play. Hopes to play the entire game, but it could be an issue. And discussed how much Lewis has been the story. First carry, a gain of two for Holloway, and it was Brown at the quarterback position the last two plays. And this is what you, you tend to see early in the game. Just stay with your base offense, see what the defense is going to do, go with it right off tackle right side. Holloway with some pretty good speed, get some something positive for two. We mentioned Holloway, a great season, 1,670 yards coming into today with a total of 27 touchdowns. He has been a force for this Paulsboro program for years. Do not discount his toughness. Second down and eight at the 40-yard line. Again, the handoff finds a seam. Does Holloway big hit laid out? And he stopped at the 45, so a pickup of five. Holloway showing some of that elusiveness and that quick little burst that he has. Great block there by Wine Hinkle on the line. He pulled over, kicked him out. He's number 54 there. That's why you saw the opening there. Nice job on the block. Colin McCarthy, your quarterback, hands off again and tripped up on the play is Holloway. He's going to be just shy of the first down. It looks like it's going to be spotted at about the 47-yard line. So decision time here for Glenn Howard. It looks like they're going to go for it. It's about a yard away. And they've been able to move the ball fairly well in these first couple plays. Full house backfield for McCarthy and the Red Raiders. Fourth and one. McCarthy looks to Howard for the offensive signals. And he'll hand it off. And it looks like from here he has it. 
Pretty good carry. The referees stopped it early. They didn't give him that second effort, but it is enough for a first down. I like the way they run this offense there. They line up their formation. They check over with Coach Howard, and Coach Howard made an adjustment on the play based on what he saw at the defense as you look at McCarthy there having a good season. McCarthy doesn't get enough credit for the job that he does with this offense. He does a phenomenal job, and we'll see that on display this afternoon. Working out of the shotgun, first down and 10, Paulsboro just inside their 49-yard line. McCarthy will hand it off right up the gut, and this one's going to go to Dow. With the exception of that fourth down play, it's pretty much the same thing. The quarterback reads. So far, he's been letting it go up the middle. They're moving the ball, though, a yard or two at a time. And kind of interesting, though, as we watch this on the beginning of the game, Pensgrove's front-line defense has a little bit of a size advantage, but Paul's Burr doing the job. Empty backfield here, quads left. Running out of the spread, McCarthy, rocket screen, throws it, has his man, it's Dowd. Dowd with the first down, Dowd into the secondary, and Dowd cut down about the 28-yard line. Well-designed players. You mentioned four wide receivers out, one receives it. You have blocking in front, and there is all kinds of room. There's your first block. There's another nice block by the wide receiver there, pancakes him, and a big gain here as they go to the long side of the field. McCarthy's first throw for 20 yards. Here's trouble in the backfield. And the exchange a little sloppy, but still a positive gain, maybe about three. Well, that's it. That's when you know you're a good team. When you have a sloppy exchange like that, you can still go ahead for almost three and a half yards. So well done on that. As we look at it again here, kind of both players miscalculated what side they were going to run to on the quarterback. Such an advantage, though, here, Rob, where you can have the coaches look over what the defense is doing and then decide what they want to do at this point right now. That's a great point. Second down and seven. Holloway with McCarthy. It's Holloway. And Holloway cut down maybe a gain of one. Good job in pursuit by Moore there. It looked like he may have got the edge on the delay, but Moore came in and made a real nice stop on that play. As we look at it again here, looking up the middle, cuts it outside. Moore does a good job to run him down and leads to a third and long. Moore is a big boy, but Coach John Emmel says do not discount just how agile he is. He's a tremendous athlete on display there. Third down. 6.35 remaining, first quarter, South Jersey Group 1 championship game. McCarthy, three-step drop, has time, throws down the middle. It's up for grabs, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Looking for Nicholas Worstall and good coverage on the play. That was Nasir Robinson back there in coverage. He held his ground. You see here, he's just waiting for him to break. He breaks. Now Robinson is there in good position, but Robinson's a little smaller and just missing that. That almost went in for a touchdown. So four down territory given their field position. The ball's at the 25-yard line. And Coach Glenn Howard talking it over here with his offense. A little bit of confusion, but they still have time. Pretty much looks like it's going to be the same set with three or four wide receivers to the long side, our side of the field. But again, a lot of time there. That's something Pensgrove's got to work on. You can't allow that much time to throw the ball. They're going to have to hustle to get this playoff. There's a timeout coming. And a timeout called by Coach Glenn Howard. Well, we saw in the first game today that Sal Marquise won number 200. And here we have Glenn Howard, one of... Arguably the best coaches to ever grace a field in South Jersey. He's won a few games in his lifetime. We had the list uh, earlier where we saw that, you know, Glenn Howard has really become as much a part of Paulsboro as anything else in that town. Paulsboro, great football town, great football, excuse me, wrestling town, just tradition. If you're, if you're not sure if Paulsboro is a sports town, go to a Saturday afternoon football game or take a look at the stands today. Uh, it's amazing when you go to a Paulsboro event how much alumni, how many people in town that have no kids on the team, they just come out to watch the program. The tradition here of just in football alone, 18 titles is unbelievable. 
And that man has a lot to do with it. And we talk about wrestling. Wrestling, you can't even get in the gym for half the matches, yeah. half the time. There's so many people there. Don't forget their basketball program has also taken off of late. So Paulsboro, just, you know, small town America. Great, great place. Fourth down. Screen pass. A lot of room. Enough for the first down. Well-designed play. Devon Rhodes pass. Touchdown. Deron Holloway. He was relatively untouched. Really well-designed play, and Paulsboro strikes first. Off the snap, it looks like it's going to be a screen to our side of the field. A great fake by the quarterback. There was a bunch of traffic. He then releases to the far side and wide open with two and three blockers down the field. Great play design there by Paulsboro. So on to attempt the point after here is Ricky Wolf. Kick is up, and the kick is no good. He had the distance on it, but not able to get it. But what an outstanding play as we go back and look at the, the touchdown here again. All the defense came to the near side of the field, and there is nobody in a white shirt. You saw one of the Paulsboro players raise his hands up. They knew that was going to be a touchdown. Well designed play, Rob. That almost reminds you of one of those plays you might pick up when you're scouting another team. The way they react to certain situations and certain formations. They lined up everything to the short side, looked long side where they've had a couple of their big pass plays, but very well done there. And Paul's Burrow on the board first. Well, it was interesting because we've seen that Colin McCarthy, typically the quarterback, but on that play it was Gabe Honorado. So again, a little bit of misdirection in terms of the way the play was set up, but also in terms of who they utilized at the QB position. It worked out well. Just one more reason why Glenn Howard is Glenn Howard. And if you're a defender for Pensgrove and you see a different number back there, your mind starts yeah. going all over the place. What are we doing here? What are we going? Sometimes you overthink things. Well-designed play, though, had Pensgrove off, uh, off beat there. Well, again, I, I mentioned that Pensgrove felt good about their chances coming into today. There is a mystique that is associated with Paulsboro. And right now, Pensgrove got a rude awakening as to what Paulsboro football represents. The kick taken inside the 10 yard line, dancing around and again, deep in their own end, the Red Devils will start at the 18. That was Jamar Johnson. He has tried to utilize his speed, but he has found that Paulsboro is equal to his task. And one of the things I enjoy most about Paulsboro and what leads their mystique are the little things. Their, their coverage on special teams, phenomenal. Very rarely do they give up a big play on special teams, and that's one-third of the game, and they do it very well. So Pensgrove will start again in this spread. Trips left for Lewis, and they're going to hand it off to the big boy Moore. Moore barrels his way forward for about two or three. We'll say two. You aren't kidding when you say a big boy. He is a load to take down. It's going to put a lot of pressure on this front line defense of Paulsburg because he is a big young man. Second down and eight. Here we take a look. Again, just pushing right up the middle. And you hope with enough carries like that, they'll be able to soften up the defense. Inside reverse. And it's Johnson. So that they're counting on Paulsboro to stop inside to do the quicks around the corner play. They're able to get a couple positive yards. But again, so far, this Paulsboro defense not giving up a big play. Third and four. Well, you, you get a sense that Pensgrove needs a first down here. Third down, trips left for Lewis and the Devils. Lewis slings it out, first down. And there you see why Lewis has been so successful as he finds his receiver in ransom. But Lewis illustrating some of that arm strength. And I think you have to have confidence in your wide receiver. He took the drop, planted his foot, and just let a laser beam go. And a nice catch by the wide receiver. And now they're going to call a flag, a legal procedure. Pensgrove trying to hurry things up and really keep the defense off balance, but you got to get set. 
pretty good job there, too, to try and keep Paulsboro off guard. Here's his play before. And again, he just plants his foot, lets it go. They found the seam in the defense. Again, that just comes up to having confidence in your wide receiver that they're going to find the open spot. First and 15 now. Lewis, again, pitches more, cuts it back, more, fights forward, nothing doing. I'll tell you what, that front line of Paulsboro read that very well. Originally, the, the play was going to the outside. The foot is plainly cuts it inside. They stayed at home, made the play very well done, and that's what this Paulsboro front line is going to see. See, the play's going to the right. He plants, tries to come back, and that is a real nice job right there to come in on the play. Savayanaya, here's the screen. And slung down at about the 30 yard line. Santino Marino in the tackle. One of the Marinos out there made that play. And, and again, this Paulsburg defense, very impressed with Pensgrove trying to get the plays in quickly, trying to catch them off guard, not able to do it. Here it is again. You see a quick hitter to the outside, but well pursued by the defense. Got the one initial block and a nice read there and a steer out of bounds. Lewis is going to throw deep, has a man open. It is caught and then dropped. Lewis Trying to find Josh Martin. For Josh Martin. And again, you can see why Lewis is so talented. A perfect throw there. And Martin would love to have this back. Devon Holloway comes in from the opposite side of the field. It wasn't his man. He comes in right here, just enough to run interference. Otherwise, that would have been a big play. And you can see right there, the receiver thought he should have had that one. So Pensgrove forced to punt it away once again. Josh Martin will punt. This is a team that has averaged over 46 points during their eight game winning streak. And right now their first two series, they have not gone very far. And this punt may have been partially blocked. It looked very odd if it wasn't blocked. He must have mishit it off his outside part of his foot. And again, Paulsburg with good field position, but so far Pensgrove only able to get one first down. That's, that's kind of shocking coming in this one to Rob. Agreed. And now, as we look at it again, here's to see if we got it blocked or not. It comes off. No, that's just a kind of missed it off the outside part of his foot. First and 10. McCarthy again, your quarterback. Here's Holloway. He's forced outside, looking for space. Uses that speed to try to get his way back to the original line of scrimmage. And that's what Pensgrove needs. They need some pursuit in the, the offensive backfield there. They got it, forced Holloway to the outside, and one of their rare losses here in the first quarter. So he loses three yards on the play, does Holloway. Second down and 13. I love this set when they go to the wide side of the field. You've got a lot of room. Right now, two wide receivers out there, usually in man-for-man -man coverage. We mentioned before, McCarthy, a talented quarterback. They're not afraid to utilize... That right arm of his. Down in motion. Pressure. Dumped. What a move by Holloway. Holloway still on his feet. Holloway very close to the first down. Right there is all you need to know about Deron Holloway. Very elusive. Looked like he not only should have been tackled, been tackled for a loss. So again, they're looking to the near side of the field. He's a release valve. There it is. Now here's your tackle that Pensgrove needs to make right there. They don't get it. Another good move here. Picks up a block up field and like you mentioned, gets the first down. Well done. First and ten. Inside handoff. And this time it's Dowd. Tiger Dowd on the carry. Maybe one. That was Brown in there, came in, read that play, fought off a block to make it a, a minimal gain. But again, this is where Pensgrove has to force a punt in this series. They, they don't want to be chasing all day with this Penn's top Paulsboro team. They trail 6 nothing, And we're going to have a timeout here. It looks like Pensgrove had a personnel issue. You, we mentioned they trail 6 nothing. Pensgrove, really, they don't kick extra points. It's two point all the time. So it frankly probably didn't matter in the total scheme of things, whether or not that point was made. Of course, it will matriculate as the, the game progresses, but nonetheless. So, Paulsboro 
comes into this game. They, they defeated uh, Salem last week in the semis 28 to 20 prior to that defeating Pennsville 42 to 28 on November the 11th. Uh, on the other side of the football, it was Pensgrove who defeated Shallock initially and then blanked a very good gateway team. We had gateway here the week prior. And, uh, you know, I, I tell you, he, he just talked to John Emmel. He just does his confidence. I said, were you surprised that you beat Gateway that much? 36 nothing. I mean, that's, that's pretty convincing. Well, we have a very good football team because well, he's not so surprised. So there you see points allowed versus their offense. But, again, the semifinals to win 36 to nothing. I mean, that's heady stuff. That's unheard of when it comes to semifinals. The teams are so good at that point. And Gateway had such a great season. They did. Yeah, that was, that was a very shocking score. So they come in here with supreme confidence. And right now, they're trailing 6 nothing. Trips left, second down for the Red Raiders. McCarthy, quick drop, has time, has a man underneath. That'll be more than enough for the first down. And cut down on the play is Benjamin. Benjamin did fumble the football, but it was the ground that created the fumble. Well, you mentioned the trips wide receivers. They all go to different zones in the secondary and wide open there. Trying to pick up, is Pensgrove's trying the difficulty right now, trying to pick up these receivers. When, especially when they go into trips formation. You can see there, they were going to the receiver on the outside. And now here comes this flip here. And yep, the ground was what caused the fumble. I mentioned before, you know, everybody wants to talk about Holloway, but when you have a quarterback like McCarthy, you can keep you honest, that opens things up for Holloway. Here's the handoff, Holloway. Again, using that speed, staying on his feet, maintaining his balance, kicking it outside. And Duran Holloway, excuse me, that was Dowd. Again, you see the three-headed monster of Paulsboro. You look at Dowd, and he runs very much like Holloway. And then you have Tootin, and it's just so much for a defense to contend with. Controlling the line of scrimmage, great kick out block there. He's got eight yards of room to eight run through. To now play. tries to He's use his speed two. to get around the corner. Pensgrove able to uh, make the play. But at the point of attack, Rob, Paulsboro dominating the line of scrimmage. Right now, Pensgrove with no answers for this Paulsboro offense. Clock continues to move, as you see towards 70 seconds remaining first quarter. It's been all Paulsboro in this first quarter of play in the South Jersey Group 1 Championship game. Holloway with a big hole, exploits it into the secondary first down. Another well-designed play. You have the man go in motion. The defense thinks it's going to him. They start to drift to the far side of the field, and Holloway has a giant hole right up the middle of the field, and they're inside the 15 on this. You look at it again, he's got a gaping hole up the middle. 13-yard line, and Paulsboro kind of having their way here early. Holloway bides his time, finds a hole, a little Le'Veon Bell move there. And if Pensgrove, Rob, doesn't find a way to solve this line of scrimmage, this is turning out to be a long day. I mean, you can see he's down. First contact comes up about four or five yards down the field, and it's becoming more and more of an issue for this Pensgrove defense. Well. Pensgrove will have an opportunity to talk about it because that'll do it for the first quarter here on the GCN. Your Atlantic City Electric Game of the Week. South Jersey Group 1 Championship game. Paulsboro on top by six. Welcome back to Rowan University, Paulsboro. Leading 6-0 here in the South Jersey Group 1 Championship game. It's been all Paulsboro thus far. And Paulsboro knocking on the door, trying to double their score. Second down for the Red Raiders. McCarthy hands the Holloway. He cuts it back against the grain, and he is denied more than a yard. Well, that time the defensive line for Pensgrove was equal to the challenge. They saw the motion go to the 
far side of the field. Holloway looked for the cutback. They stayed at home and made the play. And, and that break from the first quarter was something this Penn's group defense really needed. I think the coaches needed to get in their face and say, guys, the game might be on the line right now. Probably four down territory, although certainly Ricky Wolf has a big leg. But you get a sense that this Paulsboro team would love to exploit the edge that they've enjoyed thus far early in line play. They may have taken another timeout, Rob. Yep, they didn't get that play in in time. That's one of the few things that has gone wrong for this Paulsboro team. You talked about the field goal kicker. I was watching him in pregame, consistently hitting 30 yarders with room to spare. But I'm with you here. I think if you can put the pedal to metal and, and really show your dominance early, if I'm Paulsboro, I'm going for it. There you see your all-time coaching list. You see some great names in there. And that's where Glenn Howard sits right now at 283 wins. Of course, you see Clyde Folsom from West Defford. He'll be playing for a championship game tomorrow, 260. Coach Oberg from Delce, you see him with his 230 in this area. I mean, some big-time names in Washington Township and Paulsboro fans. There's Tom Brown with his 216. Of course, Tony Barchuk and now Sal Marchese enters the list with his 200th win earlier in the day. Well, yeah, interestingly, you see Tom Brown, who's on that list. He, of course, started things here at Paulsboro and then went on to Washington Township. But the only school in New Jersey is to have two coaches with over 200 wins is Delcy now with Sal Marchese and John Oberg. That is an amazing statistic. First of all, it speaks to the quality of coaching, but also to the quality of football within that indi individual town. Get it done, they get the job done. Third down after the timeout call, trips left, Holloway will split right, empty backfield, McCarthy, he's gonna throw it up and defend it well, that will fall incomplete. So decision time here, do they go for the field goal is the question. It looked like just incidental contact with the feet. Defender was going for the ball. Their feet wrapped up with one another. Right now, I don't see a kicker coming up. So it looks like they are attempting to, to go for it. And I'm sure that's something they discussed. Again, there's, here's that play again. Just a little bit of contact with the feet. But you can see the defender was clearly going for the ball the whole way. They're going to have to hustle to get this play in, Rob. They may have to take another timeout. Don't see the referee counting just yet. Fourth down. Sweep. A lot of room towards the end zone. Touchdown. Tootin. And we may have a there, flag here. Yeah, down at the 10-yard line on the far side, there is a flag that wasn't even thrown in the air. It was just dropped on the ground. So it wasn't obvious to us here. And here is a big call for the officials. Procedure, Paulsboro. So that play comes back. That is a huge break in this game for Pensgrove, and that may bring the field goal team on. We'll see. We'll look at it here again. Everyone blocking to the left, a wall of red, and opening room here. It's the first time we've seen that play today for Paulsboro, and they were able to run it in, but the penalty cost them. Now a fourth and eight comes up, Rob. I think they're going to go for it again the way it's looking. Uh, interestingly, they're not going to try to kick the field goal, which would make it a two-score game. McCarthy, your quarterback, once again. Fourth and eight. McCarthy, deep drop, sets up the screen pass inside to Tootin. Tootin's cut down. Ball is loose. It doesn't matter. It's going to be Pensgrove football. Well, as we look at this game, depending how it comes down, we're going to look at that at procedure flag and then a nice defensive play there when Pensgrove needed it. Tough play defensively there. They read that one nicely. As we look at it here again, good fake. Here comes the screen to the left, but there's some white shirts in pursuit. And that's a nice open field tackle. There were two players in there, but again, that was Bryant and, or Brown there on the tackle. 
Well, Pensgrove is going to need to make things happen soon. You see big Samaj Moore in the backfield. And it's Lewis. Lewis slings it outside, bouncing off one tackle and going nowhere. But a pickup of about five. That's one thing you know about Paulsboro. Going to be a very good fundamental team. That was a nice open field tackle. You're going to earn every yard you have. That was tooting in there on the tackle. Second down and three. And stopped immediately is Samaj Moore. He may have lost one. In the backfield there was Santino Marina. He broke across the line, caused interference. That's a big play again, going back to this controlling the line of scrimmage. Paulsboro's dominating on both sides. Santino Marina leads the team with 10 sacks. You can see the penetration that he creates almost every single snap. Third down and short. They gotta get around the corner here. And we're gonna have a motion penalty. You know, the first game that we had today, Woodrow Wilson taking on Delcy so many flags and we're seeing it here early. It's hard to explain. I know that there's, there's nerves, but usually after the first few series, the nerves are gone. Usually you would expect to see it in preseason games early on in the season. When you're talking best teams in South Jersey, you would think at this point, You've, play, you've played 10 games together. You should have it down to this point. We saw in the last series how important that five-yard penalty was. Let's take a look here. And now another timeout called on the field. Is it, now that the referees coming in to talk something over here. They want to wind the clock we're hearing in the background. I think they think the clock's a little behind. They're waiting. Now they'll stop the clock right there. Okay, they'll restart it now. Third down. Eight. <laughs> wow. Two people moving on the play on that play. This is the stuff you can't have if, if you hope to... <laughs> to win a championship Nobody game. Penn's Grove's killing themselves. Line. Plus the fact you're inside your 10 now. Now some pressure's on your quarterback. You hope he makes the right decision. Third down and 13. Penn's Grove yet to find their rhythm. Lewis. He's going to throw deep. And it's picked off. Picked off at midfield. Once again, it's Holloway. I'm okay with that one, though, Rob. I agree. That, that's probably better than a punt. You don't have to worry about him taking it back. Take a shot for it there. Back up in midfield. Jump ball. Give it to one of your players to take a shot at it. That's just a great defensive play. You're going to see it again here. He's waiting for the, the receiver to clear. Now the receiver is somewhat cleared. He heaves it up and says, go ahead, make a play. So here we are at midfield. That's just a great play by Holloway. We're on the same page. As you mentioned, works as a punt. I mean, the likelihood is they're not getting away a 42-yard punt. And you don't have to worry about a return either. Chances are it's going to be down on a play like that. So, again, give it a shot. Maybe yep. you get a spark. Yep. So Holloway will be working out of the wildcat here. Takes the direct snap and falls down. Again, he had some room in front, but managed to slip on the surface as Paulsburg trying to shake things up a little bit. It's interesting, you see all these new formations, and, and sometimes, and I'm not saying that's the case here with these two coaches, but sometimes you, you overthink things a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Paulsburg's been able to move the ball down the field. They've been controlled the line of scrimmage. I'd, I'd still look to run it down and throw it with the quarterback option that they have. I mean, if he you reads can, it. You have another long drive. I mean, you're taking on time off the clock, and Go to the locker room with a lead. I mean, that, that's where you want to ideal be. situation. Yep. Exactly. So clock continues to move here. We approach eight minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Second down and 11 for Paulsboro's Red Raiders. McCarthy looks to the sideline. And again, it's just very, very surprising to see how many communication issues that Paulsboro has had. Paulsboro has now burned all three of their timeouts. And again, you wouldn't expect to see that with a team like this, but there's so much being done. The game has changed so much from even back in our day. You're standing on the field, 
you hit a basic formation, the coach is calling out all kinds of signals, and if somebody misses it, it throws the whole offense off, and that's kind of what you're dealing with right here. Yeah, that's a good point. So with that, how much of that is Pensgrove doing something that they didn't anticipate? How much of that is kids are just nervous? I'm hoping you're not nervous now. I'm hoping. Early in the game, like you said, that's possible. But, yeah, maybe Pensgrove's giving you a look that you're not used to seeing. And the coaches are on the sideline. They're making their hand signals for the adjustments. But if the kids aren't picking them up, that seems to be what the problem is. You can see the coaches. They, you can see Glenn Howard there. He's making signals once they set up, but the kids don't seem to be reacting to it. Second down and 11. Trips left for the Red Raiders. And then Howard, again, waves. Yep. <laughs> they're still having issues. Trying to line up all over. They're trying to move one guy, another guy. Screen pass set up. And Marina stopped at about midfield. So a lot for a little. Yeah, as Paulsberg tried to send two wide receivers deep, hoping the secondary would follow, but the linebackers held true and were able to make the play here. So again, they're waiting to, for the receivers to release down the field. Here's the screen, but there's two linebackers right there. Does a good job to get by one. Actually, three more guys are there on the play. Third down and nine. McCarthy. With time, throws, has a man wide open at the 35-yard line. Finally cut down at the 28. And again, we see how dangerous a weapon McCarthy is as he hooks up with his receiver, Nicholas Worstall. And, and the secondary has to watch the deep ball. You see him at top side of the screen. They go too deep, They're way deep, 10 yards deeper than they need it. And that's just a great throw. Plants his foot, throws a strike. It's a great job of reading the defense. Six for eight is McCarthy, 70 yards on the afternoon. First down and 10. It's going to be Holloway. Holloway breaks a tackle into the secondary. He's fun to watch. That's the difference between a good running back and a great running back. He should have been taken for a loss of two or three. He gets by one on the ankle tackle, comes by, gets the other. A lot of running backs are going to go down right there. He gets by two guys and gets around the corner, picks up a block, and picks up that much more. Now they only need two yards for a first down. You just assume because he's small that, okay, well, we can probably just tackle him, you know, arm tackle him. He's strong, and he is uh, determined. Holloway again, easily for the first down, down to the 15-yard line. Well, the play before was all Holloway. This play was your, your offensive line. The left side of the line blew a nice hole. And what Holloway's good at, he goes right to where the hole is. He sees it and jets through for the uh, first down. Gain of six, first and ten. Again, Holloway in the backfield. Steady dose of Holloway, cuts it against the grain. Holloway driving forward, and Holloway will pick up about nine. And Rob, I'm a coach, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. They're, they're running it down their throat with Holloway. I wouldn't change it until Pensgrove can stop it. As you see it again, they are just blowing him away at the line of scrimmage. He's five yards down the field before he's touched. I don't think Holloway is going to argue with you. Give me the football. Trips right, second down. Paulsboro. On the march, Holloway tripped up in the backfield, cut down at the 10, so he'll lose a couple. That was Scott, and I think that's what the linebackers have to do. They almost have to sell out and overcommit to shut him down. That's what he did there. He got in over the edge. You see Scott made a real nice play. Now, though, it gives the option of your Pauls, bro. If somebody overcommits like that, guess what? Your quarterback can eat you up. This is where Paulsboro's drive stalled last time. They had a series of communication issues and some penalties. I would almost bet if they don't make it here, they'll go for a field goal. Full house backfield. McCarthy looks over, gets the call. And now we're going to have movement, so another penalty here. And again, red zone troubles. 
for the Red Raiders. And, and it's hard if you're a lineman. Those linemen were down early in the play. The quarterback's getting the signals from Coach Howard. They have to stay in their set position, and you get antsy down there, and that's exactly what happened. Either the left guard or left tackle jumped, and now third and ten, most likely a pass play after you've been running it successfully down the field. You would think if they're not successful here, unless it's close to the first down, as you mentioned, more inclined to try the field goal. I would at this point, because Penn's Grove hasn't shown a whole lot offensively. Twins left, trips right. Empty backfield, McCarthy, third down and 10. Throws, tipped, picked off! Picked off at the 11 yard line. And Pensgrove comes up with the big turnover that they needed, Makai Scott. Well, that was a chance for the defensive line, got the penetration. Scott was able to play center field and field that ball. And boy, Pensgrove, for as bad as they've looked here in this first half, they are still in this game. But somebody on that defensive line got a hand up. And here it is again, as we look at it here, you're gonna see one of the defenders, nice job there, got, excuse me, got the hand up and they make the play as we get back to live action. Here's Lewis. Lewis, he's going to keep here. He doesn't typically run, but he's going to here. Ball is loose and finds its way, and we have a penalty flag. Not sure what happened there. It looked like he had a chance to cut it up the middle of the field. For whatever reason, he put on the brakes and went outside. And now the flag flew as the ball went out of bounds. This is a big call here early in this game. There may be no flag. They may wave this off. There it is, good call. Wait, for waving a flag off, that, that, that flag was thrown about 20, 30 <laughs> feet in the air. Yeah, I think he got a little excited. He did. Getting back to that play by Makai Scott. Scott has had 20 tackles over the last three games. He is an impact player, 154 tackles on the season. We see why he is critical to this Pensgrove defense. Coach John Emmel said, keep an eye on him. He is difficult to stop. Second down, Lewis rolls to his right, throws underneath, has his man. It's caught and taken down at the 32 yard line is Tyreek Brown. Good job by Brown there. Everyone comes to the long side or short side of the field. Brown went about 15 yards up the field and the safety Holloway was a little late First getting there. They're having trouble throwing it very deep because Holloway's very quick and reads the quarterback very well. First and 10, Lewis rolls, throws, and to no one in particular. Well, it looks like that's is what, what the quarterback is comfortable with. They rolled to the right the last time. He got plenty of blocking, was able to make a throw. Rolled to the left there, had plenty of time. You look at it again, he's got time. When they go straight back, he doesn't seem to have as much time. So it seems like Penn's Grove's made a couple changes here, Rob, to give a little bit better protection. Maybe this rollout is what's doing it. It's interesting because you mentioned he has time. He's had some room to maybe pick up four or five yards running the ball. He does not like to run the football. He's going to have to do it, though. And this ball's a jump ball, and it's trouble. And it's picked off. Just an ill-advised pass by Lewis, throwing off his back foot. And Paulsboro comes a, uh, away with another turnover. That's Perez. Yeah, that was easily a jump ball. He saw something that just was not there. You see him go back down the bottom of your screen. I don't know if rushing in a Paulsboro player made him change his throw, but I think, as you mentioned, even if you run for three or four yards with your quarterback, that's something positive. Now yep. they've been intercepted twice with deep balls, and Holloway in the secondary is very good on the deep balls today. Lewis is one for his last four, two interceptions during that sequence. So Paulsboro with plenty of time to try to get back on the scoreboard. They lead 6 nothing. Here's Dow. Dow picks up five. And if I'm Paulsboro, I'm just staying with that play. The read up the middle of the field. Here's another almost six yards on that. I guess you're going to give him five. So far, Penn's Grove cannot stop this play. Up the middle, they're getting the blocking they need. I'm staying with it. Dowd. Still on his feet. Maintains balance. What a tremendous run by Dowd. 
That was a great play. Dow takes it up the middle, then sees he has some release room to the outside, gets by a couple tackles. This is a great athletic effort. Again, it starts with some pulling guards and tackles. And now here you think there's, he's going to go down, doesn't, gets back on his feet, and then trips up and goes down. Paulsboro moving the football once again. And again, more Dowd. And Dowd slung down. Nice tackle by Brown. Great job with this front line. A lot of the linemen are pulling and opening up some big holes. There you see the young man that finally made the tackle for Pensgrove. But again, rolling with this right between the tackles. Again, starting up the middle, you see the linemen pulling. Great blocking. And timeout called by Pensgrove. Yeah, they have to find a way to solve between the tackles right now, Rob. You're getting these pulling guards that are causing all kinds of problems for Pensgrove. And again, if, I, if I'm Paulsboro, I'm not changing it. That little indecision right here with Coach and uh, one of his wideouts. But with all this said, Rob, it's still only a 6 nothing game. Yep. That's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, y y you get a sense that Pensgrove has just not been playing well whatsoever. Out of sync, some poor decisions, some penalties, a couple things that you're not sure what the thinking is behind him. One touchdown, and they could be winning this football game. So that's why this, with this 245 to go, that's why this defensive series is important. Even if you're Paulsboro, just to, if you don't get it, punt it deep and keep them deep in their own zone. It's interesting, you got a steady dose of Dowd, and now you get a little look of Holloway. So, not unlike one another, both lethal. And again, I'm not changing. If I'm, if I'm Paulsboro, I'm giving it to Holloway in between the tackles. Second and eight, 245 left. McCarthy with a lot of time, now flushed out of the pocket. He's on the run. He throws underneath, and he finds an opportunity to dump it and refresh. Yeah, they were looking for the kill shot there, Rob, looking to get down the field, and Pensgrove stayed with it, and they had the coverage on it, and a wise job just to throw it out of bounds. Again, I'm, I'm just surprised. Uh, for me, it would be ball control up the middle. That, that play's been working all day. Pensgrove can't stop it. Third and eight. Paulsboro is out of timeouts. Pensgrove has one remaining. Some confusion for both teams right now, trying to reset collectively. Trips left. McCarthy with Holloway in the backfield. And McCarthy, three-step drop, flushed out of the pocket. He's in trouble, and he's sacked. Well, unfortunately for, for Paulsboro, that one's on Holloway. Instead of going up and blocking, he just kind of chipped and didn't go out for a pass, and that's why you see that young man there with the sack. So you can see Holloway here. He goes just to chip block and missed him, and that's what brings up on the sack, and good coverage down the field. We're bring up fourth and 18 at the 49-yard line. Tire down with the punt. It's a strange game today, Rob. This is a real strange one. Pensgrove still has a shot. Yep. And now a penalty again. This might be this delay game. Because they're out of timeouts. They couldn't have stopped it. No, I'm sorry. We had three flags thrown there, Rob, and now the head referee is calling timeout for Pensgrove, even though there are still flags down on the field. They're pointing at the flags. Well, if they do give Pensgrove the timeout, that means that they are now out of timeouts and kind of an odd place to take a timeout. I, great quiet. You know, you're not in a position where there's no way that Paulsboro is going to run a fake for this so. long. No. So at that point, just let him kick the ball. Right. Again, the coaches are down there. They know their kids, and they saw something they didn't like. So in a game like this, one mistake could do you in. So. I don't know. I could understand if it was like a fourth and four or something like that, but fourth and long, a little tougher. This is also where you got to tell your Pensgrove players, we'll pursue the kicker, but let's leave the kicker alone. Let's let him get this one off. Yeah. Nothing silly, nothing to give up a first down. Well, again, fourth down and 18 at the 49-yard line, and Pensgrove will look to create here on the return.
Hunt end over end, angled towards the sideline, bounces at the 20, takes a Paulsboro bounce, and will stop right about the 20-yard line. So Pensgrove will take over with a minute 40 left. Plenty of time for this offense, but at this point, their offense still not firing on all cylinders. If it's me, I'm looking for the short, quick pass game here. They, they've been burned twice on two deep balls. I, I think the quarterback has to have a willingness to run the ball, even if it's for four yards and slide down. He's got to make them a little more honest on defense. I'm just, if I'm, I'm telling my quarterback here, be very careful here. Let's not give one away. First and 10. They're going to hand it off, and it's the big boy, Moore. They're trying to rip it from him, unable to do so. Picks up about three. Paulsburg does a good job of staying at home and just filling the gaps and riding him down for a minimal gain. And I think this is the safe thing to do. As you look at it again, a lot of red shirts there. Pensgrove can't force anything because it could, not only, it could turn the whole game in the championship with a turnover. Lewis looks to run, avoids trouble, throws, dumps underneath, has his man across the 40-yard line, now to the 45, and finally taken down. That is Ransom. Well, that one's just an ad-lib play by the quarterback. They covered it deep down the field, rolls to the near side, finds the open wide receiver. As you look at it again, he's looking far side, nothing there. Now as he gets to about this point, the receiver gets open as we get back to live action. Lewis, rocket screen, one hops it, that'll fall incomplete. Pass is incomplete. And those are the plays you need if you're Pensgrove. They had a shot to do something on that play, but just underthrew it. You know, Lewis coming into this game, 72% accuracy. He's not had that same success here. Again, another incomplete. One completion over his last four and two interceptions over his last six. The deep ones, you can say, all right, you know, they were, that's just a, that's a throw and catch there. You got to make that last one. He's got to set his feet. Second down and 10. Lewis again looks, throws, and. Lewis. It just seems like he's not settled yet. And that is a credit to the defense. I think the defense is really making him think. He's getting some pressure on him straight ahead. And he almost rushed that throw. As you mentioned, didn't have his feet under him lined up. And, you know, we heard better about him. He's got to get his game going for the second half. Third down and 10. That's Johnson in motion. Lewis deep drop. Slings it. Has a man overthrown and picked off. Picked off across midfield. On his way, angling towards the sideline is Tootin. And Tootin finally taken out of bounds. Exactly the play that Pensgrove could ill afford. And, and that's a play again. He, he's open. The receiver's open right in the, in the middle of the zone. He overthrew it. Here it is again. I mean, his receiver's open, just overthrew him. And this is just a great return. Picked up a couple blocks, but very well done. But I, I, I think Pensgrove's got to have their, their quarterback's got to get his game. He's got to get out here early and get some throws. And it's almost like a pitcher who's just not in rhythm. First down and 10 for Paulsboro. Ball at the 17 yard line. Remember, no timeouts remaining for either one of these teams. Inside throw, touchdown! Marina. Marina on the quick slant. 17 yard hookup from McCarthy. Well thrown ball, a dangerous ball as there was a linebacker that just missed getting a hand on it. But the difference is the quarterback stayed firm, threw a hard ball, and how big is the interception now? completely flips this game around. Absolutely. So we'll see if they decide to go for two. They do. And if you're Pensgrove, you're scratching your head. Holloway. Reverse. Double reverse. And this is going to be too easy for Tootin. Well, this is where the Pensgrove coaching staff is going to be scratching their head. I think 
if I'm reading into their mind, when they had the ball about the 20, 25 yard line, they were taking it easy. We're going to take it easy, no big, you know, let's take it easy. They get the big play, they get up the midfield, and it's almost like a kid on, on the holidays. The eyes open up, and they yep. say, you know what? Let's go. And unfortunately, the quarterback made a bad throw, and uh, it came back to bite him. You got to give Tootin a lot of credit. Not only did he pick the ball off, but it was a heck of a return. Because let's face it, if Tootin only gets it back to say the 40-yard line, then they probably they're don't probably score. taking a knee and call it a half. Again, what a fine throw by McCarthy. You see that Marina makes the quick slant across the middle. Very dangerous pass. Had the velocity, had the accuracy. That's all the difference. Yeah, you have as a quarterback, you just got to commit to it. You got to step back. You got to let it go. The linebacker was there, just missed getting a hand on it. But again, it turns around. And a game that looked like Penns Grove could hang around, hang around. A, a touchdown just before kills you. As you look at this point after, they flip it in the reverse. There isn't but one white shirt on this side of the field. And that's basically a crawl into the end zone at that point. Those are the kind of things I talk about. Paulsburg's ready for big games. That's a play I'm sure they saw they could do in films, and that was a gimme. Ricky Wolf will kick it away. Paulsburg likely to pooch it here. They just want to avoid the big play. They do not. They kick it short and high at the 30-yard line. And a good return here for Ransom. And we'll see whether or not they try to throw a home run ball. You could here with they have 12 seconds listed on the clock here at, at Rowan University. This is one you could. You could throw it down there because you just hope it doesn't get returned. But it's worth a shot if you want to. Again, that's the difference between this play and the play before had time remaining. This one really doesn't. Right. And we'll see how Paulsboro plays it. They do have Holloway back about 20 yards off the ball. The Second line, they're coming up tight. So you just got to be careful. You don't fumble a ball or get in, get a hit on the throw. So it's interesting they have Brown in at quarterback. So I doubt that he's going to throw deep. He does throw, though. And this is almost picked off. Every Brown's pass falls incomplete. So Brown now 0 for 3. Nice. There was a nice read by that young man there. He read the eyes of the quarterback, dropped in, and uh, almost ten. got it. Pensgrove has to feel shell-shocked. They have not been able to do anything they wanted to do on offense today. Are you surprised they're not letting Kavon Lewis throw the football here? They're having Brown I'm, throw it again? I'm going with my my best guy at that point. Uh, that's That does surprise me. Brown is 0 for 3. Brown flushed out of the pocket. He's going to heave it up, and this is going to be trouble. And it's picked off. Deron Holloway. This is the guy you don't want with the ball. One block. There it is. And Holloway. Touchdown. Underground pass is intercepted by Deron Holloway. And if, as I mentioned, if there's one guy, if you're Pensgrove, you didn't want to have the ball, that's Holloway. Holloway turned on the Jets. And I'm going to go back. As you look at this again, you, you kind of scratch your head. This is a ball that's just forced up. I mean, he he's falling back. There's there's no chance anybody can make it. Holloway gets the deflection through three players. And now here, he just turns on the Jets and takes off. I, th there's a lot I don't understand about that play. If you're going to throw the ball deep. Put your quarterback back there. And, and if you're not. Just kneel it down and get out of there. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> And I guarantee you that Pensgrove coaching staff is going to be thinking about that, especially if they don't win this game. That, 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 as much as the Marina play hurts, that play is everything right there because all it takes is a score and a stop and then another score, and it's a football you're right. game. Now you're, you've got three scores behind, and you're going to have a Pensgrove team that is totally demoralized in the locker room. Yeah, I mean, their only shot is their first uh, possession. They get it in the second well, half. They have to come down Well, score. remember, it's Pensgrove who – started with the football so they're going to first have to come up with a defensive stop, stop. yeah this this is just <laughs> you couldn't script this any worse if you're a pensgrove fan and if you're a paulsboro fan so far you're taking it to pensgrove and you're getting a lot of help just a few head scratchers today it, there really is i mean it's you know we're, we're here talking about it live as you're going but 
it's just one of those things. It could be the fact that because you're not in close games throughout the year, you're not used to playing in close games. Maybe you do things you don't normally do. So Paulsboro, they say that there was a penalty apparently and it doesn't matter. Now it's a touchdown. So, uh, excuse me, that was the two point conversion, okay. Uh, they, got, they got me confused now. So there's a penalty on the play, backed them up, two point conversion, 22 nothing. And I'm a shell shocked as Pensgrove apparently because right now, this football game, the complexion has changed entirely. Yeah, in the last three or four minutes of yeah. the second of this first half, in the second quarter, I, you just hate to say it, some poor decisions and some poor throws have given Paulsboro the lead you see out here on the screen. We head to half. It's all Paulsboro. Welcome back to Rowan University. We start the second half. Quick look at the stats, Tad. A quizzical first half. Yeah, the, fir the first line says it all. Four turnovers to one. Turnovers that turned into points. Beyond that, again, you see the rushing yards, only nine yards for Pensgrove. It's just turnovers. It's in one word. This game's all about turnovers. And, and if Pensgrove doesn't come out, they're going to have to come out on defense first. If they don't come out with something early, they're in big trouble today. Um, so much to look to. Let's first talk 6 nothing. under three minutes remaining. It looked like Pensgrove had survived a bad first half of play. I guess you look at it as like we're a team that can score 60 points a game. We're off to a slow start. We're due. Let's make it happen. They just pushed it too far against a good team, and it came back and bite them. It's... You know, they dug themselves a hole. It's up to them to get themselves out of it right now. That, that was the talk in halftime, I'm sure. As much as Pensgrove is an outstanding offensive team, you have to be concerned because I haven't seen the ability to consistently stop the Paulsboro offense. They haven't been able to do that either. Again, offensively not getting the job done, defensively not getting the job done. And with that running with Holloway and a host of runners between the tackles, Pensgrove hasn't stopped it all day. Holloway, well, this is a time if you're a Pensgrove coach, you better come up with the best halftime speech of your life to get, you, <laughs> to get your team motivated for this one. Because that was probably the toughest circumstances going into the half that you could possibly have. How, how important is this first drive? Pensgrove has to make a stop. They can't allow anything, or this game could be over very quickly. End over end kick taken at the 20 by Tootin. He had himself a first half, and he's picked up right where he left off, delivering the pain. And the ball is loose. Pensgrove has fallen on it. Red Devil football. Well, in one moment, in one play, you just erased 25, 30 minutes of a halftime and the last couple minutes of mental distraught, distraction, whatever you want to call it. Now, Pensgrove needs to march down the field and score. Here it is again. As you see it here, it's just a, you see it in the pros, too. You're just fighting for extra yardage. Nice play, fighting, 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 and there's the hit right there. Knocks it out. Yep. Here comes the ball. Pensgrove gets the break they needed. The concern here is Pensgrove can't be in a hurry. If it's me, I'm not afraid to go two and three yards of the shot. Yep. They're in tight, too, Rob. First and ten. Pitch. Johnson. Cuts it back inside, Johnson, about five. And that's exactly what Pensgrove has to do. A couple yards of the shot, they showed a formation we haven't seen yet, pitch to the outside, they get some open room, and here they are facing the second down, about five or six. So already the coaches have shown that they're gonna have to make some changes we see the same tight formation again. Second and five. Moore. Fights for Moore, about three. Moore is a big guy, too, but so far, Paulsburg would able to keep him in check. Four carries and seven yards. Coach Emil lovingly called him the bowling ball. He would be a tough guy to tackle, but to Paulsboro's credit, they're doing the job. Third and three. And that should be enough for the first down. That's Brown. 
And again, yeah, as a coach, you have to be able to make some changes on the fly. There you see coach there. You know they're a big play team. What's wrong with two and three yards of the shot? They need to get themselves back in the game. And so far this change is making things happen. First and 10 at the 30. Lewis under center. The pitch, Moore, and still on his feet. Still on his feet. And he would have been better off going down. They see Bateman just got right through the offensive line. He's the one that started all that coming back. He read that play. They all shifted to the near side of the field. You're going to see Bateman come to the backfield right there, untouched. So he starts all the trouble for this Pensgrove team. And now, second down and long. Let's see what this Pensgrove team elects to go for. If they spread it out, looks like already, Rob, they're going to go back to that wide set. More now, five carries and just three yards. Lewis sprints to his right, has his man, throws it inside. Caught at the 31, fights towards the 26. And Ransom, one of his favorite targets, comes away with the catch. Again, just not trying to do too much. It's a proper mindset. Yeah, Ransom just lines up at the original line of scrimmage. Nice, easy throw. Hope you can get a little run after the catch. They get it there. And again, I like this the philosophy that they're going to. It's the first completed pass in a while for Lewis and the Red Devils. Well, it's not an easy throw to make on the run either. Inside more. Bulls his way forward. He'll be very, very close to the first down. I think he may be just shy. And they're calling it for fourth down. But again, you can see on that play, he took the handoff and just charged up the middle. Looked like some of the earlier plays, he was a little bit delayed. But he just sprints right to the hole, use your body weight, and just force ahead. And I'd, I'd have to think he'd be a good bet here to take it again. Fourth and one, this is going to be a test of wills. If you're Pensgrove, you got to get this first down. You have to believe it's going to be the bowling ball more. It is, and Moore has it. And for a yard or so, you can't stop that. Just get, let him take off. He's going to, even if he's met at the point of attack, he's going to fall forward for at least another yard. So again, nothing wrong with a yard or two at, at a shot here. Well done. First and 10 at the 18. Lewis looking for instructions from the sideline. Throws it up in coverage and falls incomplete. An ill-advised pass, throwing it a double coverage. And who else? There he is, Holloway on the play. Now, again, that, that's the kind of throw you see from a normal high school kid play. He's just watching his receiver. He's not watching the safety who's right there. And that's a great, that's almost like he's going up for a dunk. What a play <laughs> by at, Holloway. Just the elevation on Holloway. You gotta be aware of what's going on in the secondary as you throw the ball. Lewis with Moore in the backfield. That's Carter in motion. Again, rocket screen, cut inside, falls forward for a few. That's Martin. Paulsburg does a very good job of getting out on the perimeter and fighting through some blocks. Again, that's not an easy tackle to make in open field like that with blockers in front. But you'll see this secondary for Paulsburg. They see it right away. They're quick to the ball. You can see right there one of the men that makes a tackle beat the block. They're very quick. Here's another big play for Pensgrove. Four down territory. Third down. Lewis rolls to his right, has room, has time, throws, has his man, comes back to the football, extends, pushes, pushes. Does he have it? Touchdown! Well, that's a tremendous individual effort by Tyreek Brown, a 17-yard hookup. And Pensgrove answers the bell here early in the third quarter to make it 22 to six. Well, what can Brown do for you? He can get you a touchdown there. He gets what, just he catches it at the original markers for the first down, but a great second effort to get it in the end zone. And that's exactly what Pensgrove needed in this game. Couldn't ask for 
a better play again with that turnover. It leads to points. Now two turnovers for Paulsboro, and they're going to go for two. Lewis sprints to his right, flushed out, fakes one man, still looking the angle towards the end zone. He's not going to make it. He had a receiver in the end zone, but great coverage on that receiver. He was the only option. Once they took that option away, he was going to have to run it himself. Again, the little things for this Paulsboro team. Again, he's looking into the end zone, top side of your screen, covered. That's the touchdown play you see. Now here's the catch at the goal line, at the first down line. A great job of just pushing, pushing, getting in there. And, you know, this game is not over yet. Pensgrove has not helped themselves, but they needed it there. Now here's the two-point conversion. He looks. He's the only option now. They took away their one option, and that's a great job defensively to come in and make the tackle by Pen uh, Paulsboro. Tyreek Brown being recruited by Syracuse, UConn, among others. You see why after that individual effort. And again, it's going to take a collective effort on the part of the Pensgrove Red Devils in order to come back into this football game. The next, should they be fortunate enough to score two more touchdowns, they're going to need the two-point conversion on each. That's where as a coaching staff, you start putting it in assistant coaches' minds, start coming up with what you like if, if we get to that point. But it's going to rely first on this coverage team and then I think really on the defense of Pensgrove. As you mentioned, has had a tough time just slowing down Paulsboro today. Paulsboro always has a very good return game in the special teams. This is where they can be very dangerous. After a fumble like the last one, does the coaching staff say to their return men, hey, listen, don't fight for the extra yards? Is there any conversation? I, I would. Just, yeah, once you get contacted, go with it. Holloway at the 24. Holloway across the 40. Holloway down the sideline and a late push. And if Holloway goes down there, it's probably a 15-yard penalty. You know, it's a good credit, ho credit Holloway. Yeah, if Holloway had just, you know, you want to say Dover went down the ground, that's what the coaches are talking about, the officials. It definitely looked late from up here, but Holloway just ran through it. Well, he is so dynamic with the ball, Rob. I mean, it's like watching a, a younger version of Darryl, Darren Sproles. Here's the kickoff again. And if you're Pensgrove, I think he's the last guy you want with the balls. They come down the near sideline. Going to come into your picture here. I mean, that's late. <laughs> that's real late. Yeah. And he's almost completely off the weight of the out of bounds. First and ten. Big series again for Pensgrove. Holloway. About three. And, and if I'm Pensgrove and their defense, I'm saying, guys, we are stopping that play. They are not beating us with that play. We're going to make them throw it in the outside. And again, if I'm Paulsboro, I just keep running. They're getting at least two and three yards of carry on that. And what's been the dynamic part of Paulsboro, they've been able to run it the way they want. And then when they go to another play, they've been able to get the other play. And that's been kind of the difference in this game when it comes to the offense. Paulsboro taking their time. Holloway, big hole. Holloway runs through the tackle. Holloway down the sideline. Holloway on the carry. And I'll tell you, keep an eye on this guy. He does not need a lot of room. And once he gets that little bit of a seam, he takes off. And nobody on this field can catch him. He gets good pull there, good kick out block, breaks a tackle there. And then at this point, it's, it's a foot race. And there aren't too many players that are going to be able to catch him. Man, he's a great weapon to have in your back pocket if you're a Paulsboro fan. 24 yards on the carry. Holloway now with 70 yards on the evening. Counter, Holloway, still on his feet. To run, Holloway carries. And, and in that Wildcat, I think if you're Pensgrove, you've got to identify Holloway's the one who's got the ball. He's going to go. He's not going to hand it off. You've got to be ready for that. Too many of the, def the linebackers okay, here, Holloway himself, they went the other way. Great block in front, though. Holloway again, pushing forward. To run, Holloway, the ball carries. First down. 
And now, now Penzer has got to come up with a defensive stop here. Is that, that man's been the man of the day, Rob. He has just had one heck of a game, not only offensively. We were really impressed with that defensive knockdown at the goal line. He's played well. Goal to go here. Here comes this reading the defense and getting in what they want. Tootin touchdown. Bayshore Tootin on the carry. Five yards on the play. Touchdown, Paulsboro. That's just a great play by Paulsboro. Send the man in motion. Get your zone blocking to the far side of the field. Cuts it right up, untouched again. Uh, again, the key to the game has been the trenches today, Rob. Uh, this this offensive and defensive line for Paulsboro has come ready to play, and they have dominated. Almost exactly two minutes after the last score by Pensgrove, a critical series. It was a statement drive. Yeah, Pensgrove had a chance to get themselves back in the game, and we talk about Paulsboro with all their championships. They've been here. This is just another game for them, and they play just like it's another game, and they play very well. Paulsboro will look to extend their lead to 30 here with the two-point conversion. It's Tootin again. Tootin pushes. Does Tootin make it? No call. He does not make it. So Paulsboro's lead holds at 22 with 5.15 remaining here in the third quarter. And you almost, as you look at this play again, it's just that, like the touchdown. They go to the far side. This is the touchdown there. They got that. They ran the same play again going for the two-point conversion. The second time Pensgrove was, was up for the play. It's almost like as a coach, Rob, you almost want to replay that one scene from Hoosiers when they play in the big stadium. <laughs> yeah. Guys, it's a football field. It's 100 yards. We played it all year. It's another game. It's so hard, though, to get it in young kids' minds. That's true. I've, try, you know, I've trotted that out myself. You know, you get a new kid out on the mound or whatever, and as much as it's trite, it's so appropriate because, again, it's no different than what you've done a million times before. And unfortunately for Pensgrove, what's going on right now with Paulsboro is what they've done a million times before. <laughs> yeah, Paulsboro's been here. Uh, football comes to one-on-one -on -one battle. If you're a lineman, I have to win my battle. Hopefully my partner can win his battle and so on down the line. And so far, Paulsboro has done the big plays right, they've done the little things right, and they're really giving Pensgrove everything they can handle tonight against a team at Pensgrove that can really score. It's only been able to put six points on the board. Well, as the clock continues to elapse, every single play and every single drive becomes more critical for this Pensgrove team. They need to score on this drive, undoubtedly. Ball taken at the 20-yard line. And fighting towards the 29, it's Robinson. And what happens when you're dealing with high school kids, especially when you're you're pushing, you're pushing, you start to force plays that aren't there. And that's we saw that in the first half when it was a game when they didn't need it. So as a as a coaching staff, you have to say we still have to move it down the field if it's not there. Don't force it yet. We're still going to get to that point in the game, I think. But right now, you got to get the ball up the field. First down and 10. Well, you have seen a difference on that last drive, Rob. They were not looking to go 20 and 30 yards down the field, and they were successful with it. Lewis directing traffic. A little sweep picks up four or five, and that is Jayon Carter, his first carry. Same play that Paulsboro ran their, their last two plays, trying to get something on the edges because they can't do much at the tackles right now, so trying to get something on the edge. And defensively, I've noticed Paulsboro is backing up a little bit more. They're going to give up the little five-yard pass. They're, they they want to stay away from the big play right now. Second down. Lewis, I don't know if they got it off on time. Looks like a motion penalty. 
That, that last drive of Paulsboro had to be just so disheartening for Pensgrove. Yeah, they, they came out the second half. They got their turnover. They come down and score and feel like, okay, we flipped it over. We're good to go. Paulsboro says, not, not, uh, Holloway again with, and again, the front line blocking has just, they've, they've controlled the line of scrimmage, and that's been the huge difference in this game. Now what's going on? I pointed to the scoreboard for some reason. The linesman on the near side indicated to the referee. Now they're coming in with the clock. Operators, a, a back judge said they want to wind the clock, so they're going to wind the clock down. <laughs> so somehow the clock had stopped more than they're going to still letting it wind down. Second time it's happened in this game. You see your official right there. They're just watching it go. Now they'll stop it there. And we'll pick up with the action from this point. Second and 11. And it looked like Lewis was hit when he threw the football. And that goes back to dominating the line of scrimmage. Looked like initially he'd have a clear view, but as he went to let it go, he got bumped. And that, that'll definitely hamper your throw a little bit. Brings up third and 11. See, and he stepped into his own man, came back to block, and you, you can just sense the whole game turned on that last touchdown. They yep. had hope. They yep. were sky high, and, and it's just the the air came out of this one. Now. You, you feel the body language. Yeah. Now timeout. So we mentioned that Paulsboro, no stranger to this game, the South Jersey Group One Championship. They won last year, 29-26. Outstanding game against a very good Salem football team. But in 2015, it was Pennsville and Clayton, two teams that are not typically here. And then Pennsville won big over Clayton, 28 to six. And 2014, Paulsboro was victorious over Salem. That was the last time that Paulsboro won. So it could be three of four if this continues. We take a look at the Pensgrove schedule and Take it away, Ted. And again, you just look at those numbers on the left column, and, and you can understand why this team was confident coming in. I mean, they, they've got their 69 points, 67. They've got a bunch of 50s up there. Florence, who to believe you believe beat a Florence team 52 to nothing? Shalik, 52 points. Gateway, 36 nothing. You're feeling really good. Pennsville, 34 21. So I understand their confidence coming into the game, but when you're playing against a, a team in like Paulsboro that they're just a force. You're dealing with other forces that you're just not used to dealing with. It's amazing, too, how this Group 1 title, for the most part, lives in Gloucester County. Pensgrove, Lewis, almost picked off. Remember, Lewis came into this game boasting a 72% completion rate. Tonight's a whole different story. And some were his throws that he missed. Some was for the defense. Some putting pressure on him. That that throw wasn't quite there. This Paulsboro team, there's something to be said for speed and reading. They can read the quarterback very well, and they're very quick getting to the spot. Nine for 19 is Lewis today. Pensgrove forced to punt it away. Josh Martin will punt. And look who's back, Rob. <laughs> They're going to have nightmares about Deron Holloway. I just wouldn't want to kick to him. No. It's almost like kicking to Deshaun Jackson in that, that game against the Giants. Yep. Holloway. Surprised you didn't go up and try and catch that, yep. Rob. Yeah, I've seen this Ballsburg team many times over the last 20, 25 years, and, and it's just amazing the, the, the what they bring, the classiness they bring. Agreed. They're not trash talkers. Nope. They just come out, they play the game, shake your hand, yep. and move on. That's the thing I admire most about what, what Coach Howard has done with this program. They play the game hard, no matter what formation they run or what defense they do. And these kids earn it. They earn it on the field. They're like a machine. And, and, and we're lucky in Gloucester County because West Effort is the same ilk. I mean, they, it's just clinical. 
Yeah, you're, you're right. Well, West Deford and what Clyde Folson's been able to do. He took a soccer school and made it a football powerhouse yeah. in a handful of years. And that's another program. They expect to be in the championship game every year. And if they're not, it's a disappointment. Some teams are just happy to be there. They are there to win it, just like this Paulsboro team. Agreed. Dowd loses the football. It's loose. Pensgrove tries to pick it up. Do they pick it up? They do. Now, there was a flag down at the line of scrimmage at the 40. There's a flag on the play. There is a penalty, but there's also, more importantly, a man down. That is Makai Scott, who we talked about, is just a force on defense, and he is in a lot of pain. And you see that young man there. Really, right now, turnovers is the only way Paulsboro can lose this game. Legal block going to go against or decline it. So it will be Pensgrove ball. But as long as Paulsboro holds on to the ball, this is their game to win. So these two turnovers that they just faced have given Pensgrove some life. First and 10 with the injury, now looks like he'll get up. No, he's, he does not look in great shape oh there. He's coming off. That is a huge loss. You see some of the crowd on the far side. That is, I believe, the Penns Grove sideline you're looking at there. Again, they've had a heck of a year coming into this game. Ten and one. But you're just dealing with a powerhouse. But again, Paulsboro just opened the door a little bit. Yep. I mean, it's still a discussion right now. <laughs> That's uh, but, right. But you got to score. You have to score. But with that said, that doesn't mean your quarterback has to throw it 30 yards down the field. You still can take what they give you. Just got to come up with some good decisions here. I like this, this set. They come in with this tight set that they started the third quarter with as well. First and 10. In motion, Carter. Moore with the handoff. Moore finds a seam. Moore. Bulling his way forward, Moore towards the end zone, Moore, touchdown! Samaj Moore on the carry. 27 yards, touchdown, Pensgrove. Sometimes it's the blocking, sometimes it's the individual. Moore had probably six or seven pairs of hands on him, and now the Pensgrove crowd has something to cheer about. And again, they're back in it again. Every time you feel like, okay, maybe you're, they're back in it, Paulsboro says, uh-uh. We'll see as we're going to see that two-point conversion. Uh, and remember, these two touchdowns came off of mistakes of Paulsboro. Mm -hmm. Two turnovers. And that's that's the biggest chance. Beyond that, Pensgrove hasn't stopped Paulsboro. So now it's going to be Brown at quarterback. And timeout called here. Pensgrove didn't like something. Pensgrove calls timeout. Coach just put his hands up on his chest, said that one's on me. Is that what I heard? One timeout remaining here, Rob? As we look at this yep. again, here's the touchdown. Now here's one, first contact. Two, three, four, four five. Another six. guy coming back. Three more go down. Yeah. Looks like Ron Dane back in the day from his Overbrook days and that's going a good to call. Wisconsin. I yep. mean, that's the kind of guy he looks like right yep. there. Strong, uh, taking the contact on. They were talking about last game. Uh, with Woodrow Wilson being here, that Mike Rozier was going to be here. So I, I didn't see Rozier, but same kind of guy. Big, tough, strong. I, I don't know how you tackle a guy like that when they're, when they're rolling. Literally, like you said, a bowling ball rolling down the, the lane. So more a 27-yard touchdown run. To give you an idea, he had seven carries prior to that for 11 yards. And he's getting in the flow of the game. Again, I think they have a bigger offensive line. Maybe they're able to wear down things a little more. And this is where those, the end of the first half really comes back to bite you now. Because now you're still playing an uphill game. More. Reverse. Going absolutely nowhere. That was a great defensive play, Rob, by Anthony Marina. Marina came off his left end and was right there to greet him. That's just a great defensive play. Well, Marina came into this game with 114 tackles, so no stranger to the backfield. 
And that's probably a guy you want to block no matter what formation you put up there. <laughs> Unfortunately, on that play, I don't know if it's designed that way. You let him go and hoping that he'll bite, but he was too quick to the quarterback, and you just had no place to go with it. So, again, even though you get the touchdown for Pensgrove, here's that letdown again. You didn't quite get the two points. Yeah. You have an injury here as well. You know, the, the misdirection that kind of mirrored what Paulsboro had done earlier. Two different ways of defending yes. it, however. Yes. Let's look. take a look at the Paulsboro schedule. You saw the, the two losses to... Tomorrow's opponents, excuse me, Haddon High, yeah. uh, Haddonfield and West Efford. Outside of that, I mean, Group 1 schools, they had their way. Yeah, taking care of business. Again, both those schools they lost to were Group 2 schools. Uh, group 1, I mean, the championship lives in, in Gloucester County. He lives with Paulsboro, Woodbury. He's gone on their runs for a bunch of years. It was nice, as you mentioned. You saw Clayton go on a nice run for a little bit of a while, get a season together and get here. Uh, I, I'm just a huge fan of this Paulsboro program and what they've been able to do. And even with that strong West Effort team, that's a pretty good score on a game there last week. Pensgrove won this last in 2012. They defeated Woodbury 30-14. to 14. But uh, as you mentioned, how can you not truly have the utmost respect for the way that Glenn Howard does things here? coupled with the way that the kids comport themselves. Even if you just land, you you flew in here from Mars, you just look <laughs> at this and say, you know, 30 years of coaching, nearly 300 wins, 18 championships. I mean, that's all you need to know. You're like, yep. wow, this team's, they're good. Well, it's like a broken record. Another critical series here for Pensgrove. And I'm looking what side Holloway's on. I'm going the other way. Holloway's yeah. on the far side. Maybe Squibb. There's an onside, and it doesn't go 10. Tried to catch him off guard. Again, I understand it not wanting to kick it to Holloway, too. They, they took a shot. Unfortunately, the ball took a right turn and went out of bounds eight yards away. That is such a lost art, Rob. It I mean, is. Even, even see with the pros, there's certain kickers that just can't get. It, it's so neat when you finally do get one of them. And nine times out of ten, when you get a good one, the offensive team ends up getting it. Yeah. I don't. I don't know how often teams practice that. I mean, in fairness to Pensgrove, when you're winning by 40 points every week, it's probably not something you spend a lot of time on. Yeah, it's, that's understandable. Well, now their defense has to show up here, Rob. Well, Paulsboro in excellent field position, already in Pensgrove territory, first down and 10, and that's Holloway met in the backfield. And I think that's what Pensgrove has to do. They have to sell out and take that play away because that's the play that's been killing them. They got good pressure on the outside there. And take a chance. Let Paulsboro throw down the field. Maybe you catch a break, but I'm shutting down that play if I'm Pensgrove, and they take about a four-yard loss. Second and 14. McCarthy uh -oh. and another fumble and who has it it's Pensgrove on the play. wow by Pensgrove. you can't make this stuff up with the recovery. Rob that's one that the quarterback's got to see I'm assuming it, the running back was not where he needed to be at that point there was something and he just threw it back to the running back who wasn't expecting the ball there's there's miscommunication here going on and then the ball's on the carpet. And as we mentioned, the only thing that can beat Paulsboro is turnovers. And they've just had two of them. And, and that's when the quarterback just either has to just turn and go or just go down. That wasn't there. That's why high school sports is so much fun, Rob. I mean, that, I mean he's not And why the coaches have gray hair. Yeah, that, that's a play right there. First and ten. Here comes Pensgrove. Moore. Look at Moore go. Look at Moore go. Samaj Moore on the carry. There's a flag on the play. Now the flag was thrown, Rob, on the near side of the field. The play went the far side. There's also one thrown by the umpire where the linebacker sits. So you're going to assume it's going to be some form of an illegal block, you would think. The flag was thrown very late on the sideline here. Usually if it's some type of offensive moving or something, it's thrown early. Well, Lewis reacted negatively, so you have to assume this is going against Pensgrove. They're still talking it over. Let's see.
Personal foul. Wow, personal foul against Pensgrove. And the one official on the near sideline, I mean, he was 40 yards away from the play. He saw it. I don't know if we'll get a catch of this or not, but, man, that's a huge penalty. All right, again, we don't know the number, but the play is thrown somewhere in this area. Around now is when the flag went flying. I have no idea, Rob. Mm -mm. Good job by the guys in the truck to bring us back a look at that. Uh, again, it's just odd that I watched the flag being thrown from the near side official. It's on the far hash mark. First to 19. That's a killer. After a big offensive run. Here we go with Pensgrove again. They get something positive. One step forward, two steps back. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a state championship game, this is not what you expect. Not at all. Lewis, back to pass, has his man wide open across the 45. Swung forward to about the 39-yard line as Martin with another completion. That's a great throw there. Now that's the quarterback we expected to see. Martin was open on the long side of the field right in front of us. And he does a great job of making the catch. And they get, they get a good almost 10 yards back off of that. A little more than 10 yards back off of that. Gain of 13, second down. Lewis again rolls to his right. Has a lot of room. Will throw it. And that's an ill-advised pass and it's picked off. Who else? Holloway saw that all the way. He was playing deep from his safety position. As soon as the, the ball was about to be thrown, I watched him charge in. Again, a missed throw by the Pensgrove quarterback, and they didn't need to go deep down the field. I, I, I don't know if, I don't want, if it's panic. He had a ton of room. He could have run it. He could have run and for four yards. Exactly. He gained, gained five. He got a makeable third down. Instead, he forces the issue. Puts too much air underneath it, and if Holloway's in the area code, you should probably throw it somewhere else. And again, they're high school kids, so I don't want to get too crazy on them, but it, it's just a play. You're, you're trying to do too much. That's all this is. You're trying to. Here it is again. Now, at this point, he's rolling. He can just roll. I mean, you see, there's no, there's no red shirts to his right, and that's just a great effort by Holloway. And Holloway looks like he's about five feet when he's out there playing, but man, can he cover ground. Man, can you get up in the air? Holloway's playing like he's playing for a state championship. Uh, he does. It's, that's a great way of putting it. He's going after it. He's making play after play after play. I just, if you're a Pensgrove fan, you, you have to be really just, I don't know if it's disappointed. It's just, they're trying to bite off more than they can chew right now. Just doing too much. Five interceptions for Pensgrove. Four turnovers for Paulsboro. And this is a championship game. Yeah. I, I'd be hard-pressed. I know you've had a chance to do a lot of championship games over the year. I've never seen a championship game with this amount of turnovers. I mean, I've seen one team get sloppy, but... Not two. Paulsboro has invited Pensgrove back in, and they've turned down the invitation. It's got to be up the middle here for more. And there's trouble. Maxwell, and he just looks to get rid of it. Oh, the flag flies. Probably a legal man downfield. I'm not sure that was meant to be a pass play. Again, if I'm handing it off in that play, I'm making Pensgrove make, make a stop. Yeah. To the official down the left side of your screen there. You're right, this has been a head scratcher of a game here. So now they're going to move it back. You still have. <laughs> Even the referee's confused. He called it third down. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's head scratching. This has been a strange, strange game. Must be something in the air. Is it a full moon today? Because the first game today was, was a little confusing as well. Well, I, there is a full moon. They're telling us. It must be behind us. Now, is look it a how, full moon today? That's what they're saying. Hey, the truck is always right. I learned that's that a true. long time Even ago. when they're wrong, they're, they're right. right. <laughs> They'll tell you that. Yes. Well, here's another chance for Penn's Grove. And a big hit laid out. Holloway, excuse me, that's Tootin. 
Nasir Robinson on the tackle. It's amazing that Pensgrove is still in this game. I, I'm amazed. I got to run probably one more play here, Rob, to get us to the fourth quarter. Second and 24. Second down and 24. These are the kind of plays that can make or break a championship. These are in past years I've seen Paulsboro come away with a big play. And I'm not even saying throw it long. They've gone with like a basic running play and been able to, to run it big. Clock's ticking down. There's your flag for delay a game. How many delay of games have we seen from Paulsboro today, too? I don't know. <laughs> You've lost count. <laughs> wow, I, Glenn Howard even out there shaking his head. He's at the bottom of your screen. So, uh, again, every time that Pensgrove tries to tell Paulsboro that this game is over, Paulsboro tries to invite him back in. And they're doing it again. <laughs> exactly. 20 yards and penalties in this series, second down and a lot. Whoa. And that didn't feel good. That hurt me up here. Honorado said, I don't need this abuse. And that'll end things for a third quarter that had everybody wondering what happened. Here's a thud down to the ground. I'll tell you what, this shapes up to be a real interesting, unpredictable <laughs> fourth quarter coming up. Stick around. We'll have it for you. South Jersey Group 1 Championship, your Atlantic City Electric Game of the Week has Paulsboro on top 28-12. Third down and 34 as we start the fourth quarter. Yes, third and 34. Wouldn't mind seeing a quick kick if you're Paulsboro, but instead they're going to work out of the shotgun here. Randall Cunningham did it. Back to pass. McCarthy avoids the rush, throws it up for grabs. This is trouble, and it's picked off. Mm, dropped. Paulsboro tried to invite him back in again. Now a flag goes deep. It just threw it on the Paulsboro sideline. I don't know if this is a sideline violation, Rob. The back judge threw it from the 40-yard line on our side of the field as the players are running onto the field. The, 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 I, I didn't understand that play call. Yeah, it's a sideline violation that's coming up, a sideline warning. You're, you're risking a safety on that play. And, uh, and then you throw it up for grabs. Well, again, it comes down to high school kids, Rob. You, you have the ball in your hand. You want to make a play. It, it's hard unless you've been in. You've seen it in pro games when you have rookie quarterbacks yep. who are just out of college. Yep. You're trying to do too much. Well, this is one I'd consider going after this one, Rob. I'd give it oh, a absolutely. shot. Absolutely. I'd, I'd be going for this one on a block. I agree entirely. Hensgrove running somebody out late. Good snap. Good punt. And bounces backwards, down at about the 24-yard line. Well, originally, I was going to say the Pensgrove players got to come up and make that catch. But with that said, they got the bounce, and here it is again. The door has been opened again for Pensgrove. They still got almost the entire fourth quarter down 16. Pensgrove has to score three more times in order to win this football game, two more times in regulation. And they got to make two two-point conversions. I would say the chances are slim, but after what I've seen over the last half, anything is possible. It's been a game unlike most. I would say not unlike any other, yeah. but last game was interesting as well. It's almost like you feel like you have a grasp on what's happening. Yes. And it's wrong. Yes. It's, it's happened many times already. Here's this tight formation they started in the second half. Moore. Smiles more on the carry. About four or five. And why not, Rob? Just line him up tight, keep giving it to the big guy. He gets four yards there, just keep doing it. I, given the rhythm of this game, I gotta believe that both teams are tired. And if you're tired, give it to the big guy. Second and six. Moore bounces off one. 
and he's not going to bounce off everybody else. They still don't bring him down, but that's a credit there to that Paulsboro right side of their defensive line. They got penetration into the backfield and were able to stop him for about a two, three yard loss almost. Marino in there. This comes down to who wants it more in the trenches. Up third and seven, the 22 yard line. Now an interesting call, because you know you're going to go for it on fourth down. Pitch. Robinson for the first down. Robinson on his way. Robinson touchdown. Nasir Robinson on the carry. 22 yards. The hits keep coming. One of the craziest games I've ever seen <laughs> just got crazier. <laughs> now, here comes one of those two-point conversions you talked about. And this is something that they got to hit. You're down 10. You need to make this play. I tell you what, people are getting their money's worth tonight. And then so. This is certainly entertaining. Frustrating, perhaps, but entertaining. They're going to need the two-point conversion here. Pitch. Robinson finds a seam. Robinson isn't going to make it. That's a heads-up job in there. I don't know if that was Marina that was in there. They ran the same play that they just went in for the touchdown. And it looked initially like he had a shot to go in. And a great play there, Paulsboro. As we look at this again, there's the pitch. This is on the touchdown now. Holloway, one of his few times not able to make the tackle. That's just a great effort in there to get the touchdown that made it a 10-point game. And now here's the two-point conversion. Cutting in here and a nice ankle tackle. Otherwise, again, that looked like a touchdown. On that stop there, that was Tootin. Tootin's had a good day. We've called his name a couple times. He just saved his team two points. Ten-point lead. <laughs> Still have ten and a half minutes to play in this game. Just when you think Paulsboro is in a position to end it, they've coughed up the ball. It's a turnover fest here, and we'll see. Stranger things have definitely happened in games. <laughs> You're really waiting though for Paulsboro to come in. Can, and can it get stranger? I, this is about as crazy as you would ever think a championship game would be. I mean, it's going to be crazy looking at the articles, looking at the stats, the way you some of these stats you've thrown out with turnovers and Pensgrove in the first half, lack of offense. This is amazing. But that's what you get in high school games, no matter what the sports. This is even extreme for high school. Yeah. It's, and, it's, and this is the state championship game where you would think mistakes are mitigated. Not today. No. Squib kick. Taken at the 20. And it's come to that. I don't claim to be a running back, but all right. <laughs> I guess with all the turnovers, <laughs> I guess what you said, guess what? I'm not turning the ball over. Well, Tootin has been guilty previously of a turnover. He was the one who uh, returned it, fought for some extra yards, and had it rip loose. So this is an opportunity for Paulsboro to right the ship. Well, get their this, sea legs. In this second half, Pensgrove's done a better job defensively stopping the run. I'll be interested to see if Pens, Pens, excuse me, Paulsburg looks to throw one a bit here. So we'll see. Here's McCarthy with Holloway in the backfield. Tootin in motion. They're going to give it to Tootin. Tootin fighting off tackle after tackle. Picks up positive yardage. They've run that play a couple times tonight. Just give it to the man in motion, and it's really up to your tight end and your wide receivers on the far side to make the block. And Pensgrove does a decent job of fighting through that. That play's been relatively successful today, though, for Paulsboro. And this is where the Pensgrove defenders are taking some, a little bit of chances. They want to get in this defensive backfield. We haven't seen Dowd in a while. Holloway in the backfield. He's been the man today. He has certainly stood out. Sometimes a screen is in order with the way Pensgrove's defense is going. Tootin again in motion. And this time it's Holloway right up the middle. Holloway with that quick burst. Close to a first down. It's a great job. They fake it. 
and the, the play they had before kind of keeps the defenders honest and he takes it hard right up the middle. As you see it here, you got to honor 33. And again, you can see two defenders had to, got sucked into that. Holloway able to get a hole. Well-designed play, but they're still short of the first down. Holloway now 20 carries, 88 yards. And I think if you told that to Pengrove before the game, they would take that. Yeah, I agree. And the number of turnovers Paul, Paulsboro's had. Right through to secondary. Tootin is on his way. Pushed out of bounds, just shy of the end zone. Then that gets into that crazy area. You gotta be careful you don't fumble it into the end zone. That's just a great hustling effort. Might have been Carter there. As we look at this, great double team blocking there. And now it's just a foot race. 61 yard run for Tootin. And here comes this play. He looks like he ran out of gas about the 20-yard line, reaches ahead, but they say he goes out of bounds before that. And a chance now, I want to say for Paulsburg to ice the game, but I'm not going to say that. Power rush formation here. Somebody moved. <laughs> Now it would have been a first and goal. Gives Pensgrove a little bit of, this might be the sloppiest championship game you'll ever see. <laughs> it might be, I'd be hard pressed in all my years of doing high school sports. This, this is amazing. The first game also today was very sloppy, but this one has a B. The official's coming over to talk to Glenn Howard. I think he's getting ice for his arm for all the flags. <laughs> Do you have a trainer? Trainer? Yeah, they're looking. They're, they're calling for something. Maybe we're back to the time. Usually what you'll do in a high school game is the coaches are relatively close to the scoreboard operator. They'll call up to the coach. Yeah, they're trying to do something with the time right now. That's what this is. 9.25. I just heard the coaches so they're gonna from put the roof. More time on the clock. They want you to live through this a little bit longer. <laughs> you can hear this, there's reporters and of course our crew and Rob, it's been a long day. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it, but it's, uh, it, it's just. Uh, you don't expect this in a championship game. No, there's no continuity. It's very tough for, I think, everybody concerned. This and obviously, most importantly, the football teams. Going to try to draw another penalty. They do not. Here's Holloway. He's going to draw fresh blood. He's going to drive his way forward and try to make the end. Come on, he does not. But again, Holloway has been the beast tonight. Doesn't look like one, but he plays like one. And again, it's just this is the kind of game you expect on week one of either the regular season or late in the preseason. But nonetheless, somebody's gone home with the trophy today. We're just watching the back judge for the time here. Yep. Here we go. Holloway. Holloway. No indication. We're going to say he's short. Touchdown. Yeah, it was a long, a long call by the officials. I was with you, Rob. They waited so long, I didn't think he got in. But nonetheless, why not get Holloway in there? This has been his evening. Now you see that young man there. He's done it offensively. He's done it defensively. And now, Paulsburg, I think, is talking about going for two. No, they're going for one. Yeah, it makes sense to go for one. Yeah, there's a long discussion here. And you would think <laughs> that should be enough to do it. You would think. Wolf's kick is up, and his kick is no good. And the kick is no good. 
Wolf, who is typically reliable, 0 for 2 on the night. He got a great leg into it. Kicked it very well. Uh, and it's, it's all the full moon. <laughs> um, and if you're Pensgrove and you lose this game, it's going to be a torturous, as you see the touchdown play going in there. Again, it took a while for them to bring in, but it is a touchdown. If you're Pensgrove, Rob, you, you just got to... This offseason is going to be torturous because if you threw out some of the things that Paulsboro has done with the turnovers, you'd say, oh, how did we not win this game? But we talked about it in the beginning. Paulsboro, they find a way. They find a way. Pensgrove in the first half made a ton of mistakes, forced a lot of plays that weren't there, and Paulsboro takes advantage. It's bizarre. It's, and Pensgrove's it's, it's, still not out of this football game. It's, they're not. it's two scores. It, touchdown, turnover, touchdown, tie game, a couple two-point conversions. It could happen. And, again, with, with an offense as powerful as this offense is, it's just – I'm at the point now. I'm running out of things to say. I, I've seen just about <laughs> everything in one game. I'm, I'm just going to go to my trusty research – Let's see whether or not it is, in fact, a full moon. It feels like it. Yeah. Is this going out of bounds? Oh, <laughs> he picked it up just before it was going out of bounds. I think it looked like it was going to sit there, so he took it took to the 30. So today is December the 2nd. Okay. Full moon is December the 3rd. Oh, this. I'm so listen, you, here, here's the deal. I want you to think about this for just one second, Ted. Okay. Just think if this game was played tomorrow. Oh, my. <laughs> God bless you guys tomorrow. More games oh, that's tomorrow. That's right. Well, this I don't know. It, it, does the full moon have an effect if it's not nighttime? I don't know. I, I, I'm, that, it's my, not my, over. I'm not up on my lunar but, calendar and like lunar impact. Like you're saying, we still got eight minutes and some change to go. Rocket screen. And again, easy pick up of five or six yards. Problem there now is Pensgrove, they're going to start fighting the clock. You're fighting the clock now, so you're unfortunately you're in a chance where you have to now start going down the field. And Holloway at safety has just been tremendous at reading the quarterback. 109 yards for Lewis today. Hand off to the big guy Moore. Moore. Bulling his way forward, more, just a big load and hard to handle. And, and this is where Penn's Grove has got to be kicking themselves because they're making they're making running plays right now. They're making them relatively easily. And you take away a couple of those missed plays earlier in the game, this could be a championship winning drive they'd be going for right now. They got to make some big plays though in a hurry. Big hit laid out after a nice pickup for Robinson. And again, if you're Paulsboro defense, your job here is you're just staying away from the big play. So this, the safety Holloway is 15, 20 yards off the line of scrimmage. You see him on the right side of your screen. Your secondary, five, six yards off the start. Lewis slings it out again, another first down. And this time he finds Martin. Now that they can work with because it hardly takes any time off the clock. And that's one of those ones eventually you throw a couple then, then you do a hitch and go. Maybe you get some business. And that, that's tough for Holloway, can't be involved in plays like that. Nice throw, nice catch, stops the clock. And officially 116 yards for Lewis. Here's the big guy, Moore. Moore dances, falls forward for about two or three. Yeah, but dances is the key word. He, he's more effective when he's running downhill hard. When he has to dance, it takes away his effectiveness. Gain of three, second and seven. Robinson with the hole. Looked like he had more. Somebody tripped him up. The thing I like about this, though, they're not panicking now. It's a shame they didn't have this more at the end of the first half, Rob, yep. because I think they'd be in better shape. This yep. is what they needed to do then is they get the play outside. Initially, this did look like it was going to go bigger, and he got tripped up. Robinson again, bulls his way forward, very close to the first down. 
They're going to give him a good spot. I think we may have a measurement here. Officials are taking a quick look at nope. it here. First down. Well, you're getting close First here down, where you're going to, you still have six minutes. They're going to wind the clock now. Again, I think time's more of the issue now, Rob. First and 10. Lewis, deep drop. Again, out pattern. Has his man. That's Martin. This could be Passes rough in the quarterback, Rob. Martin. Flag thrown late. There's a flag on the play. That's a big call coming up here. This gives some life. Personal foul. Yep, roughing the quarterback. Yet another penalty, Rob. <laughs> this is so uncharacteristic of a Glenn Howard coach team. And it was clear up here. I saw it clear as day. I mean, the ball was well gone and the shot to the quarterback. And now that's going to give 15 more yards, a first down. And how many times can Paulsboro open the door for this Pensgrove team? I mean, this makes it that much more doable because you're inside the 15. That penalty takes the ball to the 14 yard line. First down, Pensgrove. I'm telling you, just tuning into this game, hang around. This has been a crazy, crazy game, and we're still not done. Pensgrove with personnel issues. First and ten. Moore, and the burst of Moore, and it's loose. Fumble. Paulsboro football. Rob, this is almost comical the way this thing is going with the turnovers, the penalties. As we look at it again, he's fighting for yards. Now they're just tackling the ball. And somewhere there you see the bodies move. The ball came out. And Paulsboro again able, is able to deny Pensgrove and an injury on the field. This is amazing. How many turnovers do you have the... A rough guesstimate as to how, are we over double digits to, to yeah, Yes. Wow. Wow. Oh, there you go, Rob. <laughs> there you go. There you go. If you start howling, I'm leaving. <laughs> that shot says it all. Great job by the guys in the truck. They found the full moon. He, 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 we're, we're still taking time counting our turnovers in this game. What do you have? Five interceptions for Pensgrove. There's a fumble, so that's six turnovers there. Four interceptions for Paulsboro. They had a fumble. It's 11? Yeah. 11 turnovers in this game. 11. I don't think I've ever done a game with 11 turnovers. Yeah, wow. unless uh, it was catered by a bakery. Yeah. Deron Holloway. He's going to try to end this game all by himself. Well, if there was a guy that was going to do it, I think he's the one. He's had a tremendous day today. Well, Holloway now over the century mark. With interceptions. 105 yards on the afternoon. Probably drove the bus over here today. He's doing <laughs> yeah. it all. Yeah, he'll do the laundry afterwards. Here he goes. Delays, sees his hole, fights for it. And I guess the biggest thing if you're Paulsburg, he's held onto the ball. Yep. And just eat, eat some clock. Just try to string together four or five first downs and call it an evening. Why not? It's not unheard of for Paulsboro football games to be somewhere in the neighborhood of two hours. Yes. Not tonight. This one's going. This one's going the distance. This is working our editing. This is this is this is NFL length. Man, I'll tell you what's going to be interesting, especially if Paulsboro holds on to win. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Howard says in the papers after this game. <laughs> I don't know whether to celebrate. <laughs> he may decline the interview. Wouldn't surprise me. It's been, it's been that type of day. Holloway. 
run Holloway carries. Now as the clouds have cleared, you saw that shot of the moon as it sits over there the There it is, now. ominously. <laughs> Amazing night here from Rowan University. Game of four on the play. Picks up third and three. Third down and three. First down here would really give Paulsboro an opportunity to put an end to this. With only one timeout for Pensgrove. Hey, and we get a timeout for Paulsboro. Again, I think Coach will be Coach Howard will be the first to tell you this is probably one of the sloppiest championship games they've ever played, and they'll be fortunate that they come out of this thing with a win. You know, I, despite all of that, as a coach, you go home happy. I go home happy. It's your last game. It wasn't pretty. We played a poor game, and we still won. Just think if we would have played well, right? That's that's the mindset. Yeah. Pensgrove, you got to think what 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 could have been. Yep. You had your shots. You can't say they didn't have their chances. No, they well, had their chances. Three minutes or so, two and a half minutes of that second quarter, if they could have that back, then, then we what would game. we be talking about right yeah, now? That was two touchdowns. So they've had their shots. So they can't go back and say we didn't get our shots because they did. It's me. I'm just giving this to Holloway and saying stay in bounds and hold the ball. The only thing Paulsburg can't do here is turn it over. Holloway. And he'll be shy of the first down. Pick up a yard and we'll have a punt. Just now, the clock's the problem for Pensgrove. And now, clock stopped as Pensgrove will take their last time out. So they can't stop it anymore. And of course, there is no two minute warning here in high school ball. And uh, I just wish you better with your games tomorrow. I know one of them's gonna be your West Effort game. Well, listen, as, as sloppy as this was, it's still a very good football game. It's entertaining in its own individual way. And again, believe it or not, the game's still not over here. Pensgrove mounts a drive, onsides kick, Hail Mary, who knows? We've seen a lot of crazy tonight. Why not? Yeah, we saw the moon, it, the way it's been. You return a nice kick here. You, you should get reasonable field position on I just think uh, whoever goes back for Pensgrove here has to catch this ball. If it's a catchable ball, at worst, catch it to get yourself in decent field position. Just a biz Again, for us, it's just a bizarre game, a championship game. There's the moon over the field. I mean, that that's it's almost lighting the field. That's... That's been the whole situation. Just a crazy, crazy night. And the punt is away. It's a good one. Taken at the 47-yard line. And now returned right up the middle. Still on his feet. Angling towards the end zone. Unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Jake. Nasir Robinson adds to his touchdown total. Amazing. He goes right up the middle of the field. There was no fancy blocking. He did it all himself. It's now a 10 point game with 3.15 to play. <laughs> Can you? Can we get another I shot of the moon? I, I, I wouldn't even say, can you imagine? Here it is again. He catches the ball. Two players overrun it. Now, again, there really isn't any blocks here. He's just gone. To, he got by one. He looks like he's playing for a state championship. Right, got one block. Great run there. Uh, just amazing run. What a bizarre night. Ten-point lead. If they get the two-point conversion here, we could be here a while, Rob. We really could be. Well, you, you probably have to go for the, the onsides kick, given the fact that you don't have any timeouts left. But we'll see how it goes. You know, they need just, this. You need this to make it happen. Just for suspense, you kind of hope that they make it here. 
And of course we have a penalty. It's something we haven't seen. Legal substitution that time is the call. <laughs> we ran out of spots for right and penalties too. I, I can only imagine how many penalties and yards we've had tonight. Too many. Well, backs up Pensgrove. Just increases the degree of difficulty here. No problem for Lewis and the Devils. Lewis rolls to his left. Looks, looks, fires, has Moore. Moore's in trouble. And Moore's not going to make it. That's a great job defensively by Paulsboro. Initially in the coverage, then they swarmed the football. Originally, I thought he might go to the end zone with that, but he elected to dump it off short. You almost feel like he had to go to the end zone. I thought he was initially. Yeah, he's too. looking, he's looking. You can see there's a man there, but there were two red shirts there, but that's a tough play to catch it from the five and try and run it in. That's tough. Well, you know the onside kick's coming. Stranger things have happened. Still a 10-point game now. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I think the game's <laughs> over, Pensgrove comes back with a play. That's why this game is so... Well, when Nasir Robinson was returning the, the touchdown, I, I, I had to take a peek at your reaction because you were wholly flummoxed. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, that never happens to a Paulsboro team. No. They're it's very just, good no, that's a That's a great point. They're very good in containment on special teams. They had two yep. guys over pursuit. And literally, there, was, there might have been one block about the 20-yard line. That's all he needed. So I, I'm just, I'm very surprised the way this thing has gone out. And again, you, you know an onside kick's coming. You're going to have your hands guys up there. But with high school sports, who knows? Who knows where the ball's going to bounce and what's going to happen here? Pensgrove has been brought back to life time after time <laughs> after time after time. They should change their name to the Red Cats. They have nine lives. They do. You ever seen a Red Cat? No. Maybe not the Red Cats. Though. On sides kick. And it is recovered by the Red Raiders. Well, now with Paulsboro, you have three 15 remaining here. No timeouts for Pensgrove now. The problem is, is that, again, Pensgrove has to score twice. So I, I'm, I, I firmly believe there will be another score in this game. I, I'm not sure about two. Well, if you're a Paulsboro player, you have got to hold the ball with two hands. That's the only shot Pensgrove has right now. If we were under two minutes, you'd probably be in kneel down time. But with 3.14, they're going to try to run a play. You just got to hold on to this ball, knowing the only hope Pensgrove has to take the ball from you. Holloway. Not much there. It just comes down to the, the play clock. If Pensgrove can hold, they, as you mentioned, they'll get the ball back, but they're going to have to score and score again, and that's what makes it difficult at this point. 109 yards now for Holloway on a total of 26 carries. He's the player of the game. Holloway again, nice. finds a seam. Holloway, slow down and cut down. Pensgrove almost got him out of bounds. I've seen certain teams, they'll let the, the running back ride and push ahead and you guide him out of bounds. Good job by Holloway though to, to go down in bounds because you're, you're fighting the clock. Great block on the end there as well to, to create some room for him. Here we go. Third and eight. Holloway right up the middle. Holloway had one tackle Holloway on the carry. that he needed to break. He couldn't do it. Touchdown saving tackle by Brewer. Another 
Big pickup. Holloway now up to 121 yards. Let's credit that offensive line here. You can see on the left side, there's a pull out, two pulls out. Beautiful job up the middle, and that should be enough to seal it, I think. Well, with 134, they can take a knee, get into victory formation, and call it a night. Well, doesn't matter how you do it, Rob. You, you mentioned it. <laughs> you just get it done. Looks like Paulsboro is going to get the job done tonight. Paulsboro has had so many great running backs over the years. You know, first one that comes to mind, of course, is Isaac Redman owns a Super Bowl ring. Teron Holloway has more than etched his name in the lore of Paulsboro football. Absolutely. And I've been as impressed with his defense as his offense. I mean... They talked about last week, he helped get them to this game, causing three fumbles and made a fourth down stop to help get him here as well. So, great job. And did, uh, they had to reset for something there. Second down. championships for this Paulsboro team. 19. To give you an example, Penns Grove has won. 19. Well, again, a tremendous season by Glenn Howard and these Paulsboro Red Raiders. They will be your South Jersey Group 1 champions. Back-to-back -back champions, I might add. A, a reminder, last year they defeated Salem on this very field, 29-26. to They've now won three out of the last four years. 19 championships, as you mentioned. This is a storied franchise, and the story just gets bigger and better. This story threw a little bit of a curveball along the way, but it's a great story nonetheless. Well, they took the cold ball on the shoulder, then he took another curveball and laced in the right field. A, a very impressive job, again, for the fact they won the game. They found a way to win it. That's all you can say. They got through it, they won it, and 19 times. Let me talk about something that we haven't really talked about that I think is indicative of Glenn Howard's mentality and the confidence that he had in this football game. And it happened before the game started. He deferred and put Pensgrove, the most vaunted offense arguably in South Jersey, on the field, three and out first series, set the tone and said, you have to beat us to win a championship because we're not going to lose this game. That's a big point. That that shows confidence in your kids. It sets the tone for your players. Wow, the coach is going to, wow. Um, he's been here. He knows what to do. And uh, he wins nine times out of ten when he gets to this game. Impressive. Congratulations to Paulsburg. Great you know, team. You know, for uh, on the opposite side of the football, you have a, a Pensgrove team and led by John Emmel, who last year was four and six. He said, you know, we're kind of on borrowed money right now, on house money, I should say. Uh, you know, we didn't anticipate being here this quickly. They have a very young team. They certainly uh, will be back again next year, given the fact that a lot of this talent will return. But, you know, a, a tremendous season nonetheless. Yeah, they have three freshmen that starts. Again, their quarterback, their top defensive player is sophomores. So, again, you would expect them to float around. But then there's guys like Dan Marino sitting there that made it early on and you know, you just hope injuries, things like that. No, there's a lot of things that are outside of your control, yeah. absolutely. But this team is good enough to get back here, Rob. And no for Paulsboro, I mean, you, you look at, at this team, and yes, uh, Holloway was really the story here, but we've seen it year in and year out. I mean, they just have so much talent. It'll be a different-looking team. You know, Colin McCarthy will be graduating along with Duran Holloway, but, you know, when you have guys like Dowd coming back and Tootin coming back and... There you see the Commissioner White handing off that Group 1 championship trophy. That's a picture that might just happen again next year. Again, uh, these players will tell you and the coaching staff will tell you they expect to be here, they expect to be in a game, and, that, and that's a lot of the battle. You have to have the talent, yes, but you have the mental uh, approach to be here, and, and these guys have it. This town has it. 
Well, Tad, I want to thank you for joining us. Quite a game today, uh, a game unlike we've seen in some time, but a great game nonetheless. Paulsboro victorious. They are South Jersey Group 1 champions. Tad Kozanowski, my co-host, my color man tonight, my producer, John Mondelli, my director, Stan Ritter, and all of the crew, I'm Rob Chris. Thanks for joining us on your Atlantic City Electric Game of the Week on the GCEN. There you see the great crew that we have had throughout this evening. We did a double header here tonight. There's nobody better in the business. These guys work long, they work hard. Always put together a great production for you. Once again, your final score, it was Paulsboro victorious 34 to 24 over Pensgrove, your 2017 South Jersey. Group 1 champions. I'm Rob Chris. Good night, everybody.